something in my liberty on my mind. Happiness coming and going. I watch you look up and watch my fever grow and I know just where I am. But how many corners do I have to turn? How many times do I have to learn? All the love I have is in my mind But I'm a lucky man With fire in my hands Happiness, something in my own place I'm steady naked, smiling, I feel no disgrace Happiness coming and going I watch you look up and watch my feet are growing I know just who I am And how many corners do I have to turn? How many times do I have to run? All the love I have is in my mind I hope you understand Hi, I'm Bill Walker, also class of 1983. And I remember during the uh, teaching about the Reformation that uh, Mr. Butler came in uh, full of animation in a big uh, purple choir robe and delivered the pitch that John Tetzel would have given uh, selling indulgences for the church and uh, with his famous cry, when the, corn, when the coin in coffer rings a soul from purgatory springs. And that, you know, that was memorable. I mean, I went to... I went to church Sunday school, but it was never as memorable as that. And uh, having gone on later to join a Lutheran congregation and study about the Reformation, I, I think of that very fondly. It's just a change in something in my liberty. It's just a change in something in my liberty. This is Rachel Gushy, class of 88. Here are just a few of the things that come immediately to mind about Mr. Chris Butler and his legacy. So, constant references to Cindy Lauper. Money changes everything. I feel like there was also uh, a whole thing about Roger Clemens, uh, the Boston Red Sox baseball player. And, um, obviously, this is France. My name is Ofer Donchin. I was uni class of 83. Uh, when we got to the Industrial Revolution, and he spent, I think, two class periods telling us his stories about working in a factory so that we would get a sense of what it really meant to have an Industrial Revolution. And that influenced everything about the way I understand um, industry and factories and work uh, for the rest of my life. It was incredible how he managed to convey the historical reality through his own experience and connect it all up for us. Well, I want to be in the cavalry if they send me off to war. I want a good steed under me like my forefathers before. I want a good mount when the bugle sounds and I hear the cannons roar. Well, I want to be in the cavalry if they send me off to war. Hey, Mr. B, it's Jeremy Hobson. I just wanted to congratulate you on an incredible career at uni high. While there is a flow to history, there's also a flow to the soup that spilled out of your ladle when you were the soup Nazi on Seinfeld Day <laughs> back when I was there. 
Uh, I don't know if that would fly in 2021, but um, I thank you for <laughs> doing it back then. Hi, I'm Paul Marty from the class of 89. During our senior year, a few of us decided that it would be a funny prank to remove the door from the social studies office and hide it in the second floor girl's bathroom. And it was particularly funny to watch the teachers rushing in and out of the office during passing period and not notice the door was missing. Of course, it wasn't so funny later when Mr. B called us into his office and said that he knew we had taken the door and that with the door gone, someone had stolen his prize medieval shield. We were, of course, naturally very upset and promised to scour the school looking for it until we realized that he was pranking us. So we went back to the office, found the shield where he had hidden it behind his desk and stole it for real. Two. After we graduated, the same group of students played several additional pranks on the school, including installing a fake football trophy in the school's trophy case commemorating an amazing football game that never happened, where Uni High absolutely destroyed Urbana High in the 1920s. Chris loved that trophy, and he used to stand in the hall looking up at the game-winning ball preserved for all these years, still decorated with the signatures of the triumphant players. And when a student would stop to look, Chris would shake his head and say, man, that must have been quite a game. Hey, Mr. Butler, this is Valerie from the class of 2014. I wanted to share a short memory. At the start of each history class, Mr. Butler would pick up this book called Fun Facts and read some to get us engaged. I guess I mentally came up with explanations as to how each fact made sense and thought the book was legitimate. However, one day there was this particular fun fact. Approximately one in every eight babies is born fully clothed. I looked up and blurted out a what? There's no way that could be true. And the entire class erupted into laughter because apparently they all knew the book was a joke. Mr. B said something sarcastic and every class after made sure I knew the fun fact was not actually fact. So thanks for keeping me in the loop. So between class and hallway jokes, the Italy trip, the gingerbread readings, and much more, I always appreciated the staunch sarcasm and fun stories and obviously how engaging class was. I know future uni students will miss out, but you'll remain very fond in the hearts of all the rest of us, so congratulations and good luck. Ben Leth, class of 2001, former student and current colleague of Chris Butler. There's so much I could say, but in this video, let me focus on how much I love Mr. B's teacher shtick. As a student, I loved his wry, straight-faced absurdity, the deep thoughts, the brutally hard, fake tests that he would give every year as a joke. And I just loved his gruff persona. Now, we students knew that there was a softness under that persona, in large part because he chose to show it to us sometimes. Did anyone watching this video see the speech he gave at his son Jason's graduation? But as his colleague, Chris's kindness was completely apparent. The irreverence and dark, absurdist humor was still there, but the stern persona was basically gone, at least in his interactions with me, and I just got the kindness. Chris, working alongside you confirmed that I appreciated both the shtick and the genuine kindness underneath it. Thank you, and we'll miss you.
my richest memories of Chris revolve around the amazing set of historical simulations that he and I developed together from the late 80s through the mid 90s, ranging from the waters of Babylon, a classroom simulation of Mesopotamian politics in ancient Sumeria, to Sarajevo, a computer simulation of conflict resolution at the start of World War I. We each had our favorites. Chris's was Diocletian, a computer simulation that gave students the harrowing opportunity to save the late third century Roman Empire from itself. But my favorite was The Truce of God, a multiplayer network computer simulation set in feudal France, where students managed barons and abbots, built towns and forged marriage alliances. We were always working on these games at the last minute. And I have a very specific memory of chatting with Chris on the phone one evening during a run of The Truce of God. And he said, wouldn't it be great if the Black Death hit the classroom tomorrow? And I agreed, so I stayed up all night adding the bubonic plague into the source code for the truce of God so that it would spread from city to city in feudal France. And the next day we had the rare privilege of seeing a wonderful look of horror spread from student to student in the computer lab as each of them caught the black death in turn, killing a third of their populations while their computer speakers played Mozart's funeral march. Fun times. <laughs> class of 83 um, and I also had to thank him for being a faculty advisor uh, for Big Show when my friend Arnold Rudnick and I directed and I don't even remember which year probably 82 ish Sounds right. 82 and uh, just how little Arnold and I understood about comedy didn't have a sense of humor neither one of us um, but so we had to write we wrote these monologues to, trying to make it like Saturday Night Live and um, it's just it wasn't funny at all um, but Chris I rewrote some of it for us so I just wanted to thank him for adding some jokes into our material uh, made it better than it otherwise would have been and just really appreciate it always thought about how engaged he was with all of the school and not just teaching history while i have many memories of your history class i think my favorite uh, memories are probably the five years of big shows that i did there one of my absolute favorite things about my time at uni high <laughs>
the thing that I'll always associate Mr. Butler with is Quiz Bowl. During my entire time playing, he was always there for the team to share fun facts he knew, keep us focused during games if we were down, drive us to tournaments at ridiculously early hours in the morning. Like He did everything you'd want out of a coach. And he was always there to support us, no matter the player or the level. And if it weren't for him and those lucky jacket, uh, I wouldn't have had the chance to experience some of the best moments of my time at uni. And I just want to let him know that I miss him, I'm happy for him, and he will always be Snake Farm to me. He works down at the Snake Farm, Snake Farm. It just sounds nasty, Snake Farm. Pretty much it is Snake Farm. It's a reptile house, Snake Farm. Of humor. She got a tattoo down her arm. It's a python eating a little mouse wearing a sailor hat that says snake farm. Right outside this lazy summer not a good history student. So the things I remember most were Chris talking about his uh, Grateful Dead cassette collection following the dead around, taping them live at their concerts. And uh, I went, my very first concert was Grateful Dead. And I remember trying to connect with Chris about it afterwards, even though I'm pretty sure I didn't really understand the Grateful Dead or what they were about until later. But since then, I've been to a number of dead, or did go to a number of dead concerts and never did that without thinking about Chris. Hi, Mr. Butler. This is Catherine Chismadia, class of 1984. Just want to say congratulations on your uh, career and transition into post-teaching. I hope you're gonna have a wonderful time. And I still take notes with lots of arrows.
Kathy Guido, formerly Kathy Harmon, from the class of 1987. Mr. Butler managed to give a fantastic gift to a struggling 16, 17-year-old kid. I stunk as a student, and Mr. Butler managed to teach me that my abilities as a student had absolutely nothing to do with the way I would turn out as a human being, <laughs> and that was a very kind thing. I thank him for that, and I also thank him for this, which I remember thoroughly. Benito, Benito, Benito Mussolini. Da 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 da. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Butler. This is Prashant Bromick, class of '87. Congratulations on your retirement. I can't believe it's been almost 39 years since I had you for subby history. Those classes were so fun and informative, and we all loved your flowcharts. And uh, we appreciated everything else you did for us, from sponsoring the chess team and taking us to tournaments, to those archaeology camps at Campsville. One memory I have is you were teaching an Agora Weeks class on pop culture, and you were showing us clips of David Letterman. And you distinctly said that David Letterman represented your generation, not ours. So I guess since David Letterman has re retired, you are allowed to retire too. I do fully expect a bushy beard. Enjoy your retirement and thanks again. Congratulations on your retirement. You've been such an amazing part of uni family for so many years. So many students were really, really lucky to be your students. I went on to get an undergraduate and graduate degree in history and my PhD last year. And I think of you often, well-deserved retirement, but I know bittersweet for you need to lose you. I hope you have a wonderful time in your next chapter, relaxing and doing all your hobbies and thank you for everything you've done for so many of us. Hey, Chris, David Bright, uh, calling to uh, wish you a happy retirement and uh, all the uh, freedom that comes with that. Look back on uh, close to half a century since uh, we first met. And, uh, it's a great delight to me that when you went into my preferred vocation as well, and uh, now you've uh, Come to the great pastures of retirement, which I can tell you are at least as enjoyable as uh, plowing the fields. So uh, hope you have a long and pleasant retirement to match your long and pleasant teaching career. Take care. Bye-bye. There ain't no truth in action. So grateful Mr. B was my teacher, especially during some of the most formative years of my life. His approach and style of teaching continue to inform me as an instructor to this day. Of course, there's the flowcharts 
the simulation games, the history of the North Pole, the art of hall blocking. But most of all, and something I didn't truly appreciate until much, much later, is how he made the study of history a way of understanding ourselves as individuals, of figuring out who we are. So I just wanted to say thank you and congratulations on an incredible teaching career at uni. My best wishes for your next adventure. Picking just one memory of Mr. B out is uh, extraordinarily difficult. Uh, I think he's one of those teachers that just greatly affected uh, all of our understanding of the world and the events in it, gave us a, a framework for processing that. And we're all of us who went through his classrooms eternally grateful to him for it. Enjoy your retirement, Mr. B. Hey, Mr. B, we are honoring you today in a Steph Kovacs Cohen and in true flowchart fashion. You are awesome, witty, fun, imaginative, fast paced, supportive, fair, intelligent, spirited, innovative, brave, strong, kind, funny, smart, clever, serious, creative, caring, enduring, persevering, and all around amazing teacher, which means making a difference in thousands of people's lives, students, and their families, which means making a difference on more people and history, not repeating itself, because people are learning and growing from your legacy, because we knew about the before way more people knew about them because you brought us the world, Mr. B, and you mean the world to us. And when my son chose the love card the other day, it said, thank you. So Mr. B, thanks for bringing us the world and thanks for meaning the world to us. We love you. Thanks for being an awesome teacher back in the 90s, the coolest teacher and um, an awesome colleague now. You'll be greatly missed. Uh, uni and the history office will never be the same. I am Nathaniel Hopkins, class of 94. I want to thank Mr. B for being one of the major reasons why a uni education has been such a great foundation for so many of us for so many years. Mr. B taught us to think about process, which has been applicable in so many different ways. Mr. B also put that into his own practice in teaching. I remember once writing about the wrong topic for an exam essay, and he allowed me to write just the correct flowchart to show I understood the correct material. And of course, Mr. B's sense of humor and fun was perfectly uni. So cheers and congratulations for ending this chapter and starting the next one. Steve Nafziger, class of 1996. I don't remember many specifics of studying with Mr. Butler in the classroom, I just remember how much I liked it and how much I thought the study of history was, was, was something that I could do moving forward. And lo and behold, not only do I still have the flow of history, at least volume two, I'm not sure what happened to volume one, um, but I've even become something of a historian, at least an economic historian, someone that actually teaches many of the things that I first learned about uh, in Mr. Butler's class. So... Congratulations on a wonderful career and best wishes uh, moving forward to the next stage.
with a wave. Mr. B showed us that lines and arrows connect us all. He taught us to listen for the music and how it wanders and returns to the line. And he showed us how a quiet, diligent, peaceful presence can make a difference. I wish Mr. Butler the best in his retirement. Thank you for everything. May the story continue. from the Uni High class of 2014. I wanted to wish you a happy retirement and I'm living in Switzerland now and thanks to your European history classes I know more history than about 99% of Americans living here. So thank you for that. Thank you for everything. Uh, have a happy retirement and keep in touch. Just want to wrap up and say uh, thank you, Mr. Butler, for for many, many years of service and for enlightening so many people. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Mr. Butler, thank you so much for your decades of dedication to Uni High, and I hope your well deserved retirement is swell. And blah blah woof woof. Thank you for everything. Uh, have a happy retirement and keep in touch. Happy retirement. Thanks and happy retirement. We love you, Chris. Congratulations on all your accomplishments, and thank you for all of your years of teaching uni students. <laughs>